What's up YouTube? In today's tutorial, we're going to build this horizontal scroll using native Webflow interactions. This will work for multiple sections on the same page, regardless of how many items are in that section, and even if the items are different widths or unit types. So let's get started. So first, let's add a div on the page and give it the class of section wrapper. This is going to hold our entire horizontal scrolling section. It will be 100% width, and then inside that div, we'll have another div and give it the class of section height. This is going to be the element we scroll past. It'll be 100% width, and for the height, we'll do 500 viewport width for now. Inside that section height, let's have another div, and let's give this the class of sticky element. So this needs to stay with us while we'll scroll. We'll give it sticky zero pixels from the top. We'll do 100% width and 100 VH height so it takes up the full height of the screen. And now that element is staying with us while we scroll past the larger parent. So inside that sticky element, we'll have another div. And let's give this the class of track. It'll be 100% the height of its parent. And this will be the element we'll move with an interaction while we're scrolling past the section height. So inside that track, we'll have another div. And let's give this the class of track flex. We'll apply flex box and we'll justify to the start and we'll give this 100% the height of its parent. So inside the track flex is where we get our items. And if you were using a collection, this would be the wrapper, this would be the list, and this would be the item. So we'll give this first one a class of panel one and it has a pixel width. The purpose of this is really just to show we can use any unit type we'd like. Here the width is set to viewport width. If I add in panel three here, you'll notice that the width of this one is set to viewport height. Um, so really we can use any unit type, any size we'd like for these panels, and we can add however many we'd like inside of the list element. And now that we have that, we can scroll down here. You'll notice we're getting some horizontal scroll, but not the good kind. The user's having to scroll left and right here. So we can't set overflow hidden on any parent of a sticky element. Sticky won't work in that case, but we can set overflow hidden on the sticky element itself. And now we don't have that left and right scroll. And if we want to quickly test it or rearrange our items, we could set the sticky element to overflow scroll. Just make sure we scroll all the way back to the start and change this back to overflow hidden before we work on our interaction. So now that we have that, our interaction is going to be moving the track. And to test some things out, I'll go ahead and give this a bit of padding and maybe a background color for now. So we're going to be moving this element using transforms and watch what happens when I move it negative 100%. It's moving negative 100% of its own width, and the track element is the width of the viewport by default. We want the track to be as wide as all of the items inside of it, so what we'll do is select the sticky element and apply flex that justifies to the start and set the track to not shrink or grow. And when we do that, now this track element will extend past the width of the viewport. It's going to be as wide as all of the items. And you'll notice when we do basically negative 100%, it's moving that track element completely out of view. So we actually want our interaction to end somewhere around here when the right side of the list reaches the right side of the screen. To do that, what we're going to do is grab our track flex and we'll give it negative right margin of 100 viewport width. So when we do that, we're saying let this parent track be the width of all the items inside it minus 100 viewport width. So now when we move this track element negative 100%, it should exactly line up where this last item ends right there. Um, no matter how many items we have or what the width of those items are, because this negative margin right here is just subtracting 100 viewport width from the width of the parent track. So now we should be able to move this with a Webflow interaction. And what we're going to do is apply the interaction to the section height. It'll be an element trigger while scrolling in view applied to the class and let's create one called horizontal scroll. So let's select the track element and we'll apply a move to it. We're gonna move it 0% and then here we're gonna move it to negative 100%. And if we preview right now, you'll notice we can't really see the start of the interaction. I can't scroll up any higher than this. So what we'll do is change the animation boundaries to start when the element is fully visible. And with that saved, what we'll notice here is this interaction starts when the top of the section height is at the top of the screen, which is what we want. Now it's ending a bit too late. It's ending whenever the bottom of the section height is at the top of the screen. 
We want it to end when bottom of section height is at the bottom of the screen. So it sort of locks in place right here before we're able to scroll into the next section. Webflow doesn't really have a trigger type like that. We could add a manual offset here and try and eyeball it. But if we change the height of sort of our section height element, then we would have to change this as well. So it's not really a great solution there. So we're gonna do sort of a different workaround instead. What we want is whenever the section height goes out of view, we wanna still be able to see this sticky element here. That way it's kind of in view while we're seeing it finish. So we'll grab the sticky element and we'll give it negative 100 VH bottom margin. So it pushes it below the section height. And just so we can see what's going on here, I'll add a little border uh, to the section height so we can see clearly where it's ending and sort of test things out there. So here we have our section height, it's scrolling and here it starts to scroll out of view. And whenever the top of it reaches the top of the screen, the interaction's over and then it unlocks and it should allow us to scroll into the next section but our sticky element is now overlapping the next section because of this negative 100 VH. So to fix that, let's just grab our section wrapper, give it bottom padding of positive 100 VH to counter that. And now we can see the section below. And if we preview that, what you'll see is sure enough, while we're scrolling past our section height, our interaction is playing. Whenever the top of this section height, this blue thing reaches the top of the screen, it stops, it unlocks, and we're able to continue going. So just so we can see this a bit more clearly, I'm going to remove the borders. I'll remove sort of this background color and padding so we can see how this looks without the illusion being broken. So here we have the horizontal scroll working just fine. It ends right there, it unlocks, and we're allowed to continue. And this will work no matter how many elements we have on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the smoothing of this a bit so we have a bit smoother interaction here. And then I'll just uh, copy this section height element, have another copy down there, and I'll delete a couple of the items out of it so we can see how this works uh, with multiple sections on the page. So here we're scrolling, we have a bit of smoothing, it unlocks, and here we're scrolling on the last section and it stops right there. And we can even change the width of items on different breakpoints and it's still gonna work. So if I come to this breakpoint and I say, instead of 100 viewport width, I want this item to be 200 viewport width. Um, so what we'll notice now, I'm scrolling here, this item is two times the width of the screen and it's still ending whenever this last item is out of view. So that is great there. Um, we have that set up and working. One thing you will notice is that here I'm scrolling at a normal pace. This feels pretty decent. Here I'm scrolling at the same pace and it feels a lot slower. And that's because we have less items to move over the same distance of our section height. We could try to fix this by adding combo classes to the section height and adjusting the height of each one. Or if we want to figure that out dynamically based on the number of panels and the size of the ones inside, we can just add a little bit of jQuery like so. And here what we're doing is looping through every section height on the page we're finding the child track element inside of it, and we're getting the width of that entire track element. So if it's something like 3000 pixels wide, we're gonna go ahead and set the section height to that same width, so the scroll feels more natural. And then we're gonna run this on page load and also when we resize the screen. So when we save that, we won't notice any difference here, but if we go to publish, now on the live site, we'll notice that the scroll feels more consistent with that scroll speed between the two sections, and it'll stay consistent as we go down to the different breakpoints. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you in the next one.